So, after a few videos on storage media on various consoles, the one topic of contention that seems to come up time and time again is the SATA version on the Xbox One and the PS4. Many say that it is SATA 2 and others say it's SATA 3, and I'd like to share with you our take on the subject. Now, given the minimal nature of the information, some may not be fully satisfied with the takeaway from this, but this is pretty much everything that we have and what we can derive from. And that being said, if you have any additional information, whether it be a press release, a statement by a hardware developer, or some sort of schematic even, uh, let us know, because we would like as much information as we can to have as informed of a take on it as possible. We'll start with the Xbox One as the information we have on that is a bit more straightforward and therefore easier to make a deduction from. At the time of this recording, the only real information that we have to show the SATA version of the Xbox One system as it pertains to the Xbox One X, which would be the latest version of the Xbox One, is this Southbridge schematic that it appears to have been from a press release sometime before the launch of the Xbox one X console. As you can see in the diagram, it shows for both the Blu-ray and the internal hard drive that they run through SATA 2. Now it also shows that it has USB 3 for the USB 3 interface. However, given the fact that there was no appreciable difference between the external USB connection and the internal SATA connection from our tests of the SATA SSD in our previous video, we are left to assume that the entire thing runs through a SATA 2 controller. Now this of course does not account for processing times or any other factors that may limit the loading times of games, so we can only make minor assumptions, we can't really say definitively, one way or another whether it is a SATA 3, but everything here would lend itself to suggest that it is a SATA 2 connection. Now there's likely schematics for the original Xbox as well, but the Xbox One X is the best case scenario for this system, so if it does not have SATA 3, neither would the original Xbox One. This is some assumptions made based on a minimal amount of information. If you or somebody you know works at Microsoft and would like to share some additional information to more accurately inform as to what the SATA version is, or for that matter, what the limiting factors are for the loading speeds, let us know, we would love to have you. But at this time, this is what we got. Okay, let us move on to the PS4, as the PS4 is a bit more interesting. There's a bit more information that in turn makes it a bit more convoluted. For this one, our our main source of information is a series of articles from 4gamer.net. It's a Japanese website. You can see the link in the description. It is in Japanese, but Google is pretty good about translating it. You can check that out there should you so choose, but it largely stems around an interview with, he is listed on Sony's website as EVP Hardware Engineering and Operations for Sony Interactive Entertainment, hardware engineering. So he is, he is somebody of note that is a part of the hardware at Sony. So what he says should carry some weight. Now it is a Japanese language article and it is being translated to English through Google. So there may be some bits lost in translation, but the nice thing about some techno babble is it isn't translated it just that's what it is in Japanese and that's what it is in English so hopefully there isn't too much and if any if there are any native Japanese speakers that are looked at that, this article and there is something that is misinterpreted uh, please do let me know as that would be nice to clear up if that's the case the interview covers a few aspects of the new PS4 Pro but the one that we're interested in is the SATA version and basically it came up in the discussion of whether or not it uses SATA 2 or SATA 3. And there was basically the statement that says that it uses SATA 3. And then there was a correction that further clarified that it is SATA 3 compatible, but it still utilizes SATA 2 as its interface. Somebody much more skilled in Computer and electrical engineering would be better at explaining why and how that works the way it does, but basically think of it as you have a SATA 2 connection, you can still plug in a SATA 3 cable. PlayStation 4 was designed to connect to 
via USB 3.0 SATA bridge. After that, although the Siri ATA controller was integrated into custom LSI. Now, arguably, these articles create more questions than they answer, but from this, at the very least, if this is translated correctly, the connection interface itself remains based on SATA revision 2.x, which is the latest generation small version. Either way, the verdict for the PS4 Pro is still similar to the Xbox One X in that we have some evidence and a decent idea, but the actual version is still a bit muddy. We don't have anything concrete. We have somebody stating what the version is, but then there is a confusing clarification as well. So the best we can say is that from what we can tell, it is using SATA 2, but is compatible with SATA 3, which would explain why there is a SATA 3 hard drive in the system. There was a SATA 3 hard drive actually in the Xbox One X as well, and it may be a similar scenario, is that it was forwards compatible, but it was still running at those slower speeds on the interface itself. If it wasn't obvious, this video by no means intends to put this topic to rest by sharing this information. If nothing else, it is to exemplify the fact that we really don't have much information at this time as to the versions of these interfaces. So if you were like us and you find that this topic is still worth talking about, whether or not a what is now a last gen console using one version of storage interface over another do share in the comments if you do have any additional information whether that be a link to an article an interview or you yourself have worked on the hardware there have been enough comments on it that this does seem to be a topic that people do care about so if we can find out more about it we would love to do so but at this time this is all that we had we hope you did find this informative or if nothing else interesting and if you do have more to add to the topic let us know down in the comments if there is any new information that comes to light, we will follow up on this and share with you here on this channel. So get subscribed to see if we end up having anything more to share. Well, thank you all for watching and stay tuned as we have many more tests to share with you on the Xbox Series X and possibly even more older console tests. We shall see. But that's all we had for you for now. And until next time, we'll see you later.